So welcome to this edition of Chat with Chairs, Budget with Fiki. We are delighted to have with us today, Mr. Manish Sharma, President and CEO, Panasonic India and South Asia. He's also Executive Officer of the Panasonic Corporation. Before we start, just like to briefly introduce him. Uh, Mr. Manish Sharma is the President and CEO at Panasonic India. Uh, and South Asia, overseeing the growth and development of the company in the region. Mr. Sharma is responsible for driving profitable growth along with strategy planning and business development for the entire product portfolio of Panasonic's consumer, enterprise, mobility, and industry divisions. He is also responsible for steering operations in India and South Asia and propelling business uh, growth across B2C, B2B, and B2G segments. He also serves as the executive officer of Panasonic Corporation. Beginning with engineering uh, research assignments, his career of two decades has spanned from hands-on operation to strategic products and business planning in various electronic majors like LG, Hotline, Samsung, and Hair. Uh, Mr. Sharma was also uh, represented uh, CMA, which is the Consumer Electronics and Appliance Manufacturers Association, and been president from 2014 to 18. Currently, he's the chair for Fiki Electronics and White Goods Committee and the Fiki Energy uh, Storage Committee. He has been instrumental in steering the industry to greater heights. He holds a bachelor's degree uh, in engineering, and uh, also apart from his interest in work, he loves spending time with family and catching up with friends. So with that brief introduction, uh, I would like to actually go into the main discussion uh, today. And 2021-22 was presented. Um, just to start, what's your view on the overall impact of the budget on the economy? And then later on, we'll talk about the manufacturing sector. Rajji, thank you for having me here, and I'm extremely uh, delighted to uh, share my thoughts today with everyone. And uh, I personally believe, and as also the Honorable Finance Minister started off by saying that uh, we should look at this budget in the backdrop of five mini budgets in the year gone by. And for the fact, uh, I represent uh, FIKI's Electronics Manufacturing Committee. Uh, can't agree more on this because uh, in the backdrop of those sort of five mini budgets, uh, we had yet another one coming up where uh, there was a very methodical approach, uh, clearly identifying uh, six focus areas. And I still remember uh, the Honorable Finance Minister clearly laying out a strategy which is prioritizing those six focus areas. And as we all know that uh, the biggest of all was health and well-being. And the second was uh, focus on infrastructure. And third was inclusive development. Fourth was uh, ensuring that uh, we completely utilize the true human capital which we have in our country. And then fifth was uh, how to really fuel innovation and R&D out of our country. And the sixth one was, uh, which I think this government has uh, uh, reiterated over a period of time, which is minimum government and maximum governance. And with this kind of very methodical approach and a backdrop of the year gone by, and if I reflect upon how the previous budgets have been, so I think my reflection is that uh, over the last few years, the focus was more on the supply side and possibly that was the need of the hour. And uh, we do remember that how a structured approach of uh, relooking the inverted duty structure to enable at least assembly in the first instance to start to manufacture in our country, happen in our country, and then subsequently look at our strategy that how do we enable backward integration? So I think clearly the focus of government of India from the point of view of manufacturing and very specific to electronics manufacturing, which is a huge potential, is very clear. And Honorable Prime Minister also clearly laid out the path ahead by uh, telling all of us that the very way forward is to create self-reliance in our industry. And my understanding of uh, self-reliance for electronics manufacturing industry is that we have to at least take two very important steps in the time to come. And for that, some of the enablers were uh, highlighted in the budget also. I'll talk about them in my subsequent conversation. But essentially, we have to take two very important steps. First one is 
how do we unlock the potential the demand potential of our country and second is in this whole process enable backward integration to make ourselves globally competitive and hence start to export and uh, therefore my first reflection of the budget is while last few years government addressed the issues on the supply side this budget is going to take measures which will help us unlock the demand potential of our country so those are my initial comments as far as the budget is concerned thank you so you know you actually in the conversation mentioned that uh, you will talk about the impact on actually the electronics uh, and the white goods uh, sector uh, so what you know what do you think is going to be the impact of this budget uh, specifically on do, these two uh, sectors going forward so as yeah as i mentioned that uh, this budget largely focuses on creating jobs and hence uh, an environment where there will be more takers for uh, consumer durables mobile phones and a lot of consumer products and uh, as i mentioned that this has to be looked in the backdrop of five mini budgets so i'll take a moment to uh, share my thoughts on the pli scheme which government has already notified into mobile phones and then subsequently for 13 more sectors and fikis electronics committee was very closely working with the relevant ministries including uh, very closely working with the scale committee and also with dpiit for some of the uh, focus sectors and i personally believe that those are the sectors which have a huge potential to position india on the global supply chain map and air conditioners is uh, one of them and we all know that a large budget has been allocated almost to the extent of 200000 crores for these plis over next 5 years and uh, for air conditioners uh, fikis electronics committee was very closely working with dpit and i must really compliment the kind of speed which all the stakeholders have uh, demonstrated and the very true spirit with industry the chambers and government authorities came together to carve out a very objective strategy not necessarily the strategy which uh, will take some time for us to really implement but i think real methodical steps uh, defined very clearly which are very time bound to be taken in next one or two years to position air conditioners industry from a current level of 16 17000 dot crores to 1 lakh crores in next 6 to 7 years so that is the kind of vision which we have set for ourselves and then i also compliment my colleagues into industry for coming together and in some sense replicating the direction which the automotive industry has taken in the past of looking at aggregating the demand of components to create economies of scale and hence encourage component makers to make those investments simultaneous to the demand expansion which is going to happen in our country and then in this whole process look at exporting especially looking at uh, the western geographies out of india Uh, for us to be positioning as a prominent hub for manufacturing such products so air conditioners is just one example we are also diving deep into electronic components pcbs atmps and televisions so fikis electronics committee is working very closely with the authorities to also enable clear policy measures in other product categories also so you mentioned the various product categories and you know Um, in the budget, for example, and we were talking about aggregating motor productions, you know, electric motor production, small motor across the different segments that you talked about. So, if you look at this budget in 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 you know in the in the customs kind of duties and all, they have actually done some rejigging. In some, they've enhanced duty; others, they've reduced uh, duty. Uh, so, if you look at this and look at other aspects of the budget, other than that, you know, you talked about uh, the pillars of the budget. which are the other sectors and which are the other areas that have really benefited uh, from this budget uh, going forward two aspects i would say one would be a macro aspect because we all know that how much of uh, investment is going to happen into uh, creation of infrastructure so naturally uh, new avenues open up and we all know that over last few years how much of focus this government has laid in terms of adoption of technology and we thoroughly believe that while we look at one perspective of manufacturing which is how do we enable assembly and backward integration to happen in our country but there would be immense rub offs of uh, when these investments start to happen so these will open new avenues so industry 4.0 is going to become a reality in the time to come so imagine when a factory starts to happen you open up avenues for sensor manufacturers component manufacturers device manufacturers platformers application developers 
so and so forth so the rub offs of uh, the current approach are going to be plenty in the time to come so that is the first macro sort of point of view on on this and the other point of view uh, which you asked is that uh, there would be plenty more sectors where uh, there will be a huge traction in the time to come and i mentioned about air conditioners and you also touched upon that how the duty structures on some of the uh, devices like motors and compressors were revisited so here what i believe is that uh, we have to have a very clear approach where production linked incentive schemes go parallel with a so called phased manufacturing approach and the reason i feel that is Uh, the essential idea is that how do we make ourselves competitive with some of the existing global manufacturing giants and here china might be uh, one in concern and industry feels that the current disability compared to let's say manufacturing happens into china is in excess of 10 to 12% depending on products and devices so how do we address that disability and when we create economies of scale in that situation we create a clear competitiveness and industry for sure not uh, cannot depend on uh, continuous incentives to sort of subsidize and you know deal with those disabilities so idea is how do we backward integrate and how do we create scale and for that interim period so to say 4 to 5 years these incentives would be needed and therefore i believe that uh, while pli is going to address let's say 1/4 or 1/3 one, one of the existing disability on the other hand the domestic sourcing on account of increased duty structures is going to become more competitive for the interim period and therefore i support this idea that together with pli if we can have a pmp also going forward in next 5 to 6 years and then industry makes itself competitive is a fantastic approach to deal with you know you you actually talked about the pmp uh, there were only about 13 sectors uh, you know when you talked about the production linked incentive and you also actually heard in many of the conversations both the prime minister and the finance minister saying that if something else needs to be done or something needs to be done at the right time it would be done so if you look in that in the context of that comment what is it that you know in the in addition to what was announced in the budget Does the government need to focus on going further uh, to really reach scale in the different sectors that you talked about and really push manufacturing? I am optimistic when it comes to the regular approach which industry needs to uh, take from here on, because uh, with the kind of engagements and the announcements which have happened, and I always believe engaging with the government over last uh, few years, I feel that the engagement was reasonably uh, consistent. however during last 8 to 9 months it is far more deeper and objective and we all know that uh, government is moving at a pace which is kind of unprecedented and therefore a larger onus is on the industry now when it comes to incremental steps of uh, dealing with these kind of issues of creating backward integration setting up those uh, ancillaries for uh, large factories to ensure that the majority of supply chain happens in the country i think the onus is with the industry now my expectations uh, with the government from here on of course would be plenty lot because on one end we expect that uh, we have to really unlock the demand potential of this country by further lowering the taxes specifically the gst so for example in case of air conditioners uh, the current gst which is uh, attracted by this category is 28% and industry expects that in order to create a larger rub off even on the environment the energy efficient air conditioners should be taxed at a lower rate so those kind of expectations uh, we uh, we would continuously sort of uh, reiterate with the authorities on the other hand for india to really position itself on the global map we need to do some game changing manufacturing to start to happen in our country and we've been talking about uh, fab manufacturing so how do we really make that happen we've been talking about uh, products into energy storage so lithium ion batteries in particular so i believe that a uh, very different approach is needed to really unlock that kind of potential and that kind of large manufacturing to happen in our country and a potential uh, public private partnership uh, people into uh, government and people into private sector coming together and you know taking that responsibility of enabling those large investments and in that whole process sharing the shoulder of uh, the risk which might uh, be there and then government also coming forward and taking the responsibility of creating that kind of demand uh, by their own consumption and otherwise also so i believe in order to unlock 
large manufacturing to happen in the country for those strategic sectors because there is a lot which we have to deal with so when you talk about batteries we have to also look at how the backward integration how the raw material which is needed will be sort of uh, supplied that in the time to come apart from the ongoing matters i i would say that those kind of tactical matters we have to now start to discuss some really strategic matters where we uh, take those large steps to really position india at a position which it truly deserves just building on that thought you know you mentioned about the pli scheme and you know the pmp program and if i were to take the mobile phone example so they had a pmp plus a pli scheme there and you know we have now become net exporters of at least end mobile phones etc so if you look at that aspect and you extrapolate it to the other different sectors that you have just talked about uh, whether it's the white goods or the other areas of electronics you know where do you see uh, us uh, you know uh, going in the next 4 to 5 years and you know will we actually truly get scale in that sense and be a you know very you know positive yeah. player in international markets so i have a unique point of view here because uh, uh, the big advantage with our country compared to let's say our southeast asian counterparts would be our geographical location especially to serve the west for product categories where cost of logistics might be a big advantage to uh, our country and uh, here i think we have to take two approaches and uh, for mobile phones we know that how competitive we have become and we are becoming the hub for manufacturing to cater to demand outside the country also even for categories like air conditioner where total cost of ownership is the new consideration for people to uh, you know uh, uh, take their decisions of uh, uh, where they should be sourcing their products from and uh, i personally believe and here my own organization panasonic has already started to take some steps so we have already started to export air conditioners to some of the south asia countries so which is bangladesh and sri lanka and we have also started to export out to some of the middle east uh, countries so so in that whole process i am very confident that when it comes to finished goods export products like uh, air conditioners and in near future uh, televisions led uh, lights i think has a huge potential so we are one amongst top 3 manufacturers in the world for led lamps so that is one approach we should definitely take of uh, looking at exporting finished goods out of our country and the second one which uh, is a thought uh, which i have been deliberating with some of my industry colleagues is that how india can take a unique strategy wherein we create a hub and spoke model because not necessarily all the countries would be uh, open to have finished good coming in because many of the countries are now starting to become more protectionist of letting that assembly operation happen in their own country so how can india become a skd or a ckd supplier to those countries where the consumption or even assembly is going to happen and here we should look at uh, exploring some of the geographies in the west including a huge potential of next couple of decades which is africa and some of the uh, countries into europe so i believe this is the kind of approach which we should take and i'm extremely optimistic that for some of the categories we may have a very large potential in next 2 to 3 years if i come back to the india market you know just just to look at it uh, the uh, the covid actually struck at a very unfortunate time for the white goods and you know the uh, uh, because the season really is a summer uh, season there and we you know we lost a lot of time uh, april may june uh, how do you see this year you know the this year panning out and how do you see the next year uh, going forward are you you know uh, i'm sure you're optimist that's the word that you use but how do you look at the whole sector going forward so the data points are clearly reflecting that uh, pent up demand is coming back and we could uh, very clearly see that categories like television so while the challenges still continue on either side so demand still continues to remain slightly unpredictable on the other hand uh, supply is also highly unpredictable because of uh, more reasons than few so one of uh, the reason is that the commodity prices are uh, continuously increasing since last 6 uh, to 7 months and the trends for next couple of months still uh, reflect a continuous increase and uh, in aluminum in copper into a variety of plastics 
it has increased almost 15 to 20 percent. On the other hand, uh, uh, the supply chain efficiencies are such that for a lot of raw material, including products like uh, open cell for televisions and compressor for air conditioners, motors for air conditioners, and so on and so forth, uh, there is an inconsistency in supply. So that is one temporary challenge which industry is uh, dealing with. However, on the other hand, we could very clearly see that uh, the pent up demand of uh, the period when COVID hit us in the initial months started to come back. And we have seen that into televisions and uh, washing machines and many categories. Another very interesting trend, which is very clearly visible, at least in India, is that uh, people are preferring products which are helping them multitask. And here categories like uh, dishwashers, vacuum cleaners, uh, uh, washing machines, and especially products which are uh, smarter, which are kind of connected, which are helping people do multitasking are uh, into a good demand. And uh, uh, we have some early indicators of uh, summer season because uh, the, the annual calendar is such that industry starts to scale up production in the month of November and December for the upcoming summer season. And with the kind of supply challenges industry is facing, industry still is very optimistic for uh, two reasons. One, uh, there are early indicators that the weather pattern this time in summer is going to be supportive for those kind of uh, cooling products. And then there'll be at least 10 to 15% of the pent up demand of the last season, which is going to come back in this season. And industry in last few years uh, have really taken up uh, some unique steps. So, so more energy efficient products are being developed. So today, the sale of inverter air conditioners is far exceeding the previous ones, which are the fixed speed and products are becoming more smarter. So for those kind of reasons, and as I mentioned that Indian consumer is becoming more conscious. So today, total cost of ownership plays a major role. So I'm very hopeful with the kind of enablers which are already there. Today, consumer finance is all also helping people make their purchasing decisions and pull them up. So I'm very hopeful that uh, the upcoming summer season will not only bring the demand back, but uh, industry will also face a situation where pent up demand is going to help uh, them scale up uh, both their sales operations and also in this whole process, the manufacturing operations. So thank you, uh, Mr. Manish Sharma, for uh, this extremely uh, interesting and informative chat talking about the pillars of the budget, the impact on the manufacturing and white goods sector, what more, uh, you know, the whole strategy in terms of the PMP and the PLI and how it will help uh, going forward. Also, you know, your very sharp focus on what industry uh, needs to know and, uh, and ending with that great positive note that, you know, 2021, 22 is definitely going to be much better uh, than the previous year. And given the indications of ramping up of production in November and December, you are looking at a great uh, season again. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we hope and you know, are pretty sure that we will see increased investments in India and India emerging as a hub for white goods and electronics. Thank you very much. Thank you, SG, for having me. Thank you so much.